Yo, crew, welcome back to another episode of the Skippy Report. On this episode, we have my boy, Mitch Kreps, from the American Midwest. Anyway, so we're going to sit back, enjoy, listen to this episode where we talk about telemark skiing, how we got into it, life in the Midwest, and all the cool little places to go skiing out in the Midwest. With a special invitation from Mitch that if you're out there, Hit him up on social media and he'll take you around and show you a great time. Sit back. Enjoy. Just came back not too long ago from the, the brewery. Oh, Place. yeah? And, and yeah. what are you drinking? Some uh, Midwest colored water? Uh, this is, so it's called heavy melon. I have no idea. Um, my roommate, she is a pole dance instructor and she had like this, uh, this party at a cabin. And so we then got, I think about like 60 seltzers for free that came back to our place. So we've been drinking those. I think this is the last one. Oh, you know, you know what we call those in Canada? What's that? Bitch pops. Bitch pops. Well, I mean, they get me drunk and they're free, so I guess I'll take <laughs> That's all right. I drink bitch pops, too. So, <laughs> hey, look, I, I got this going on. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm drinking a, a roadblock, there you go, Ham's Doppelbach beer from uh, Walker Brewery and just across the river from Detroit. Oh, over there in uh, Windsor. Yeah, my daughter lives there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so when uh, your commander in chief uh, decides to uh, let us come your way, yeah. I guess I guess he's still stinging from the loss of the battle, the War of eighteen twelve, when we burned down your White House. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna make those bastards pay." <laughs> you know what? Fuck, 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 fuck them for a while. It'll be all right. See what that actually? It, I I that's interesting because my buddy Austin, he just came from. Vermont through Montreal and Toronto on, you know, in on foot basically with his car, but are you yeah. guys not allowed to come here? No, we can we fly can there. Here? Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can fly there, uh, but we can't drive across because like my, you know, you guys are planning that trip road trip, right? Yep. Like J peak is less than an hour from my cottage. I consider that my home mountain, even though it's six hours from my house. Yeah, well, that, I, I, I love J Peak. That place is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I haven't been there. It was what was it? Twenty seventeen is when I was last there, and that was when I was still a snowboarder at that time. Right. Is is when I went out there, and somehow, some way, we got the luckiest we could have possibly been. Right. We we showed up. It was like a four day trip and um it's it started snowing as soon as we got there, you know, four days of skiing. Like I was I brought my I brought my telemark skis because my buddy Kai, um, out in Massachusetts. Right. He he was the one who actually told me, like, Oh, you should try telemark skiing. And uh and so he's, he's like, Oh, I guess I'll I'll give it a try too. And, you know, all of a sudden he just like I think he went to the top of Cannon Mountain in New Hampshire. Yep. Twice, and he's like, "Nope, this is not for me." Right, right. And I was like, "Well, I have some skis that are way too floppy for me because I weigh way too much for them." <laughs> and and he's like, "Well, I'll just sell you my skis, exactly what I paid for." And I'm like, "All right, that works for me." So I, I I got like a day of skiing in there, but I was mostly snowboarding at the time. But I can't wait to go back. Right. Before we get started, I got to say to the crew who will be listening to this, welcome back to the Skippy Report. And on this episode, we have my boy, B-O-I, Mitch Kreps from the Midwest. So you've been listening to us talk a little bit during the intro there about uh, going skiing at Jay Peak and uh, the partial, I'm going to say, semi-impermeable border between the U.S. and Canada. Molecules can come north, but none can go south. <laughs> hey, what? Oh my gosh, what is that? It's like 
it, it's a permeable word, but there's like an official word like for that. Yeah, can... yeah, it's uh, the the longest non-defended border in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, like we're all cousins. My 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 great grandfather's from Vermont. Yeah, and and my great grandmother, who he married, straddles the town, or she lived mm-hmm. in the town. It's like Stansted, Rock Island, Derby, and Derby Line, Vermont. And okay. there is a building called the Ask uh, the Haskell Library. The front door is on uh, in Vermont, and ninety eight percent of the building is in Quebec. No way. <laughs> yeah, and just just today I was looking on a Facebook group that I belong to because that area of Quebec's called the Eastern Townships. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's somebody. They're right on. The, you can see the international border line right there, and they're playing uh, road hockey like back in the 1930s or 40s or 50s, you know, <laughs> in the winter time. And the faceoff is like right on the border line. It's awesome. No way. Oh yeah, there are houses oh. houses that are built half on Canada and half in the U.S. They have they have to go through like a pre screening just to buy them things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that that house, I don't even know if it's used, but you know what? Just a little west, there's a little hamlet called BB because it's a, it's a big granite uh, mining area, and um, when you go down this one road, on the north side of the road is Quebec, on the south side of the road is Vermont. It's just a residential road, but pre nine eleven, people could just cross back and forth. So if you want to go that. see your neighbor and go have a beer at your neighbor's house, you have to truck on down the road, cross the border, go through customs and immigration, drive back. So you may end up driving a kilometer to go 50 feet. Oh, my God. No way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I ride my bicycle a lot down there. Okay. And I <clears throat> I have to carry my passport with me because on this one ride, I'll cross the border like four times. Oh, really? Yeah, and there's lots of times where the border's, like, right on the road, right beside the road. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's kind of crazy. I, uh, it makes you wonder, like, did they not think of that at the time, or was that border later established? Uh, and they kind of just said, you know what, fuck it. We're going to just <laughs> put the border here anyway. It doesn't I, I, I think that was it, because there was a big uh, industry there, and I don't know what it was. And there's a, a bridge across the river because uh, half the factory is in Quebec and half the factory is in Vermont. So mm-hmm. it's, and, and, the, and the employees would just go back and forth um, through this covered bridge. That's yeah. pretty unreal. Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But you know what? It, it's what makes that part of North America interesting, I think. I like, uh, yeah. like that area. Oh. So Certainly. I, I, were, I remember I went out there. Uh, who I went to Killington and I went to, I, I, so what's funny. So previous to telemark and skiing heavily, I was a big downhill skateboarder. Oh yeah. So, so like longboarding and things yep, like that. Yep. And one of the passes that we skate, um, actually one of the huge hairpins is the hairpin of the parking lot of Mad River Glen. Okay, yes, I know that, yep. The back side of Mad River Glen. Yes. A huge pass. And, you know, I, I had no idea. I was like, oh, there's this, you know, ski lift there. Like, yeah, pretty cool, and I, like, keep skating down the road or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, I, I look back, like, uh, a couple a couple of years ago, and I'm like, wait a second here. I know Mad River Glen, and I know where I was at that time. Right. And that, that was the time I was, got hit by a semi because I took a corner too far inside. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so and, this this was like unofficial long long boarding down the uh, yeah down the pass. Yeah, I think that's up and over Camel Hump or something like that. I think Camel's Hump. Um, I think Camel's Hump's near there. I hiked. That oh, okay. Camel's Hump. Yep. But I, th- I think it's pretty close by. Um, yeah, I remember a friend yeah. telling me he drove up, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's a ski lift there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it, all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, I didn't realize this was you know where I was, because that's like a relatively busy pass from what I can tell. Right. And then it makes me wonder where on that pass or where which turn from which side do you have to take to get to the front side of Mad River Glen. Right. 
But you, uh, you've given me knowing, some homework to check on Google when we're done, man. I I know. I kind of want to look. I kind of want to look as well. Cause yeah, yeah I, I, cause I remember going. Yeah, I went out there in 2015, and that whole area just made me want to live in Vermont. I, I right. just recently, I was um, I was interviewing for some new jobs recently, and uh, King Arthur Flower. I was actually uh, interviewing twice with them. And I, that was going to be um, Mad River Junction, I want to yeah. say is what it is, on the border of New Hampshire and Vermont. Yes. Unfortunately, White, White River Junction. Ah, White River Junction. Yeah. Yes. So I was I was hopefully going to get that because I've always wanted to live in Vermont. Yeah. But uh, they didn't call me back after, like, the second one. Oh. So it is what it is. That's crazy. What are you going to do? Yeah. So now we have the formalities. Uh, kind of, well. A bit of the formalities aside, because uh, we've never met, met personally, and we're just yes, we've, meeting we've meeting virtually, and have done so on Instagram and Facebook and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So tell us who you are, man. Yeah, uh, Mitchell Krebs. Uh, I am a recent telemark skier, as of a couple of years ago. Um, I do packaging engineering in my free time which is my job. So that's pretty cool. Um, went to Michigan state for that and kind of been uh, doing that for five years. And I, uh, you know, I, I snowboarded before that uh, when I was a kid, there was like a, it was winter walled and is what the um, official, what should I say? Like sp- ski school was um, we traveled all to the, uh, Detroit area ski resorts and they, you know, gave us patches on our, you know, right. ski coats to say, Hey, you're at this level, this level, this level, this level. And so I snowboarded for two years doing that. And then at the time I was getting really into hockey and hockey took over forever because I was a goalie. <laughs> okay, that explains some of it. <laughs> that explains a lot. You know it? what? Baseball catchers and hockey goalies are like offside. So, so <laughs> I was a baseball catcher for a while, but <laughs> but uh, my buddy Salem was way better than I was, so I let him have that one. Right. And more like he took that from me is because he was that much, that much better. <laughs> but I played, I, then I played second base in, uh, in high school. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, and then I played uh, hockey goalie for Lord knows how long. And I'm actually starting to get back into it with my new job. They got an intramural team. Where oh, cool. Goalie on it. Cool. So, so you grew up, you grew up around Detroit? Uh, I grew up in Lansing, which is oh, okay. the capital yeah. of Michigan. Yeah. Um, we had no ski hills it was uh mountain brighton was our closest one yeah um that was maybe 45 minutes away i never went there on our on my own outside of winter walden um at the time because i was i think i was like 13 when i was doing that and um but yeah i enjoyed i enjoyed it i definitely uh skipped out on all the lessons pretty quickly uh, I was like, all right, I'm doing whatever. Like, I'm going to go to the train park because I'm a 13 year old shit. Right. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, yeah, I did that. And I, then I played hockey. And then um, in college, I worked two jobs throughout all of college. Um, and so I never really had time to ski. I didn't really have the passion. Right. Uh, to get back into snowboarding, things like that. And so then I got back into snowboarding. Um, my first year out of college because I'm like, Oh, I have time. I have money. Like, this is sweet. Like, right. Let's do it. Right. And so my buddy, Mike Gerard, um, he, uh, is the brand. He was at the time, the brand rep, uh, for spy, spy sunglasses, spy goggles, uh, Jones snowboards. Yes. Snowboards and now bindings. Mm-hmm. And so he hooked me up got back into snow sports and it really took off from there. And I was like, Oh man, like this is sweet. Love being on the snow. Um, and then that was my, I think that was my, Oh, I'm trying to remember if I went to Bohemia that year with my buddy. I think I did not. Um, so yeah, got back into it. 
And then, so that, then I was hooked on snow sports, uh, came back 27, uh, the 2016, 2017 season, uh, I think is what it was or 2017, 2018 season. Um, and then I started to get more into snowboarding and then I was like, okay, I know of a few backcountry spots around the Midwest. Let's get a split board. And I looked to my buddy, Mike, because Jones is like a crazy split board company. And I said, Hey, like, you know, what are you looking at? Like, you guys can need boards like that I can do. He's like, Oh yeah, like, I can get you set up for like 1200 bucks. You know, everything. I'm like, Holy fuck. Like there's no way <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll, you know, do that. And then, uh, my buddy Kai Salam, who I knew through skateboarding and who was a friend with Mike as well. Um, he's like, Oh yeah. You know, try telemarket, you know, it'll get you up the hill. Um, it's kind of a little different. I'm like, yeah, I'm a snowboard kid, so I'll never go full skier. Right. Uh, so I'm like, I'll never lock down the heels. So, uh, Talmark was the next thing. And I, um, you know, I scoured around and, uh, and, uh, I found this pair of K2 Dawn patrols Nice. with black with diamond. Oh. What is it? <laughs> The Dawn Patrols oh. with the flowers? Yes, yes. The red ones with the flowers. Yeah. Oh, my. Those were classic. And I got I had some uh, BDO2s on there. Right. Um, I had to then scour at the time because they had, like, the, the small cartridges instead of the long ones. Right. They had, like, small, like, uh, I forget what, what it's called. It's not uh, mid-stiff. It's not red-stiff, but it's, like, the really loosey-goosey one. Yeah. I think that I it's that. the green cartridge, isn't it? No, I th- no? I think no. Th- I think you're thinking of Rotafellas. No, no, the... no. Well, yeah, maybe. Well, I was thinking about what because I have a buddy and that's all he skis. Oh yeah, and I can never remember what cartridge he he has. All I know is that they have a green on the end or something like that. Oh really? Okay, I guess I never. Uh, yeah. I guess I never remembered that one. But it was the Lucy Goosey one. I'm like and. I'm like, I can't even fit into this because right. I was uh 20 not I was I thought at the time a 27 and a half mondo. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, it should probably fit. Um so then I was uh on the New York ski blog, um, which is and just this one guy, Harvey Road, if you ever heard of him. No, I um he he skis gore and Greek peak quite a bit. Okay. And he's a telemark guy and he was like, Oh man, like I'll give you some free boots. If you can uh, tell me all about Mount Bohemia on wow. our ski blog. Uh, cool. <laughs> it's just like, just write some posts about Mount Bohemia ski blog. Like let's, you know, yeah. let's make it happen. Yeah, cool. And uh, so I, I wrote a few posts and he's like, all right, man, what's your address? So he sent me out some boots, some old, like, beat up t2s that were you know they they worked they got me into it right um yeah it was pretty sweet actually um so then i you know classic you, you get that uh the 113 tips tall yes. tips are good. mike and mike <laughs> i can't remember their last names yeah i forget the official <laughs> the official names on it's it telemark but, tips and something else yeah yeah, I oh, I forget what the names officially was. I I I just sent my book off to another guy last year, so I don't have it on me. Right. Um. But yeah, I, I took that out and took it to the hill for a day, and I was like, see, I told all my buddies, like, see you later. I'm gonna learn, figure yep. out what's going on. Yeah. Hit the bunny hill, and um, you know, kind of just took off from there. And I quickly realized that my boots were too small. Uh. And that I overpowered the skis pretty hard. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I was I was struggling. I was struggling, but I was but I was I definitely. Uh, and then you know the next couple months I was between like all right, is it a day where it's like I want a snowboard or if I want a telemark and right. Um, finally, started to take my um, telemark gear up to Boho, and the first day at Boho, it's just like so. For those that have never been there, have you been there? I have driven in the area because my wife is from Thunder Bay, so sometimes we'll go oh. up through the UP, through Wisconsin and Minnesota to Thunder Bay. But I've always okay. wanted to go up 
towards uh was it copper harbor area yep copper yeah. harbor area in the, yeah. the uh, keweenaw peninsula yeah yeah and now that we have our trailer it, we'll get up there yeah you come up come up in uh uh what is it parking lot camp yeah yep that'd be that'd be awesome yeah because our trailer sleeps 12 <laughs> sleeps 12 yeah it's it's an actual it, it was a, it's got a toy hauler it's a toy hauler no uh, way. Yeah. So, but we don't have motorcycles or anything. We all have, uh, we have all uh, human powered toys. So, paddle boards, we have road bikes, a tandem, uh, mm-hmm. you know, our skis, our, our garage there is like our back door. So, I anticipate when COVID's over and we get to travel or entirely through North America, you know, you're out riding, you get soaking wet, whatever. You can come right into the trailer, strip down, dry off, and then go into the warm part of the trailer. That's sweet. I actually, <laughs> I, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, <laughs> my uh, So my roommate, um, who helped me start technically Midwest Tally Dads, yep. he's uh, conjuring up a plan for winter camping. So uh, it's not going to be as luxurious as that, right. but... Um, we, you know, like the, uh, the large political signs that are like four by eight. Yes. So taking those, creating triangles out of them and cutting them so that they're, uh, there. So you're going to have eight pieces of that. Yes. And it creates a airtight tent. Nice. That doesn't allow wind to go through. You found, I think you found the plans online somewhere, but that's cool. We're going to, we're going to hopefully do that. But yeah, the unfortunate part is the, stripping down your wet clothes where the hell are we gonna put those exactly we're gonna figure that, <laughs> we're gonna figure that out sooner or later yeah but. yeah yeah so you mentioned midwest telly dads so inquiring minds my wife yeah mrs skippy wants <laughs> yeah. to know where midwest telly dads came from because uh josh madsen told me yeah but those guys aren't dads yeah. so my wife wants to know and i said well maybe they wanted to hook up with the midwife or Midwest Telewives. Yes, it, uh, <laughs> pretty much where that one came from. Uh, so it is, I've always been called out for a much older person than I am. Um, when I was like 13, I was asked to the bar by like my barber and things like that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like only like 13. Um, so I've always been like, Oh, I'm like, I look like a dad. I got the mustache. I got the big gut. Like I'm in, so I'm a dad. Um, and then no, 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 no. That's it's the father figure, the father figure. Yeah. Okay. Not the dad bod. It's the father figure. <laughs> the father, I, like, I like that. I, I do like that. Uh, Just don't put a collar on. That's all. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. So <laughs> uh, let me think here. So that's how like the dad came about. I've been, you know, normal, th- normal dad stuff for a while. Um, and then I think it was just like, I started to get into telemark and I'm like, Oh, we should get a crew together. And I had been big within Midwest marketing to an extent, like uh, right. my buddy Kai, who got me, who told me about this whole thing. He, he's like, Oh, you should do, please come to the Midwest similar to how they do uh, all like the Brazilians do like, please come to Brazil, but to like all like the famous people. Yes. So like using that marketing technique for the Midwest. And so that, that's how like I was big on like the Midwest marketing and making sure people come and everything like that. And so I kind of just put them two together with like, I'm, I look like a dad and love moms. And that was kind of really it. Uh, And then I was, you think here I was pretty drunk at uh pictured rocks um we were hiking along the north shore or well, the south shore of superior yep or, or I'm mean, so we were hiking that and I was pretty drunk because some dude randomly pulled up in a, a pontoon at, after we'd been hiking for like a whole day and a half because we hiked out I had the next night that we had to you know backpack out of and he gave me a, a bud light and i had uh a big 
thing of uh, liquor, and I was celebrating after that. And so <laughs> then I was, I started thinking. I'm like, oh, like, I, I had like the idea come to come to my mind of like, uh, you know, like Midwest Telly dads, and then that's how I had a patch idea come together, where it was the the badge with the two ribbons, yeah, yeah, and the beer. So originally it was um, hams. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I'm, so I'm holding. I'm holding up one of his, uh, one of Mitch's, uh, silly pints. Yes, with his uh, <laughs> logo on it, and, and I noticed that there's Labatt Blue there. Yes. <laughs> so originally, Labatt Blue was not going to be there. So originally, it was Hams, which I just cracked one. Um, best beer around. Cheers. And <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so originally, it was going to be Hams because that was my myself. Uh, my roommate Jake and my buddy Willie, that was all of our favorite beers. We all, I technically kind of forced them into telemark skiing. Um, so because, you're, you're a televangelist. Yes. Yes. I had, so that, that same, uh, set of Dawn patrols that I had got my buddy Willie into skiing and then got my roommate Jake into skiing. And so now, um, so they were both telemark skiers and we were, at the time, the core of the Midwest Telly Dads. Um, so we loved hams, and we also loved LaCroix, just because that's also a Midwestern beverage, uh, yep. for those that didn't know. Uh, is that, is that a beer? It is a seltzer water. Oh, okay. But uh, we we always do LaCroix and gin, because it tastes like uh, bitch pops, as you say. Right. But it's... <laughs> But it's gin instead and get way more drunk. So that's always fun. <laughs> See, we call that panty remover up here. Oh, okay. Now, that'd go. be good for the Midwest Telly Dads. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, any, any gin, any drink, gin and uh, mix, a uh, panty remover. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife that. is going to be slapping me because she always listens to me. <laughs> 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 oh that's great say we <laughs> there's uh thankfully I mean, there's, she's a pinhead also oh oh really yeah okay that's awesome yeah she uh when i tried it i told her you should try it i think you might like it and she was like nope and then um she was going to do it and then she had a bad ski crash and she's missing three weeks out of her life and she even had a helmet her goggles really saved her are you serious? Yeah. So I would race in Ontario and Quebec on Telemark, and our local hill w had a ski jump when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. there are some young guys from one of the closest cities, uh, Oshawa, um, and they would go there to train on the ski jump. Well, after those guys, and they were on the national team and were in the Olympics mm -hmm. and, and the World Cup and stuff, um, they – redesigned the pitch it's still kind of steep and mm -hmm. uh it's just a run now but they had groomed it funny one year and it was great for jumping for me to practice my jumping on and i don't know what she did but she yard sailed hard enough her mitts came off oh man yeah so i was looking for because i was at the bottom of the hill i skated back up a bit so i could kind of see her i couldn't see her so my buddy and I went up the chair. We were sweeping the trees. And then because we're regulars there, the lifties know us. And they yeah. said, hey, Keith, go into the uh, into the uh, lodge. Sean is in there. And she looked like she'd gone two rounds with Mike Tyson. Oh, my God. No yeah. way. Yeah. I guess she got airborne, slammed down face first. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, That's brutal. Yeah. So after she recovered from that for a little bit. Um, she decided to give telemark skiing a try, and she really loves it because she has uh, a Harrington rod in her spine. She has a fused spine. Oh, really? Yeah, and she finds telemark way easier on her body than alpine. Well, I tell people that as well because you're not taking the brute force of hitting the snow. You're flowing with the snow, and your knees are your suspension. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So and and because we're like genuflecting, that increases that suspension than if you're alpine skiing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so she doesn't, you know, she spends half her day alpining and 
whenever she feel like throwing telemark turns down she can and yeah she enjoys it a whole lot so i've got her some skins some of the black diamond uh uh, kicker skins i think they're called oh the ones that go like un- like uh, just under, under yeah just under your foot and the tail yep yeah so yeah i want to get, get out there yeah a local store was closing they were selling them for 20 bucks a pair i was like yeah i'll take two yeah i would jeez <laughs> yeah See, i i i just used those um for the first time this past year um the i was in i was in michigan for Oh, what was it for? It was for Christmas time. And I had a, I had my back country set up that I was going to use. Cause I was going to go up North towards Traverse city area. Yeah. Um, and my, one of my other buddies who's never telemark before I had an extra telemark set up for him because we were going to go to this local, um, back country spot called Mount Mancelona. If you mm-hmm. ever heard of it. Nope. But I knew, I do know that they're skiing up around Traverse city. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, slightly northeast of Traverse City, but it's um, maybe 30 minutes from there. Okay. And uh, it's just this little spot where there's a guy that owns it, and one of my buddies from high school does the glading there. Okay. And so it has, like, two pathways to get up, um, you know, left side or right side, and it takes you up to three different peaks, technically, cool. that are up there. And so my buddy uh, – Tyler, uh, never telemark before. I'm like, Hey, I got a touring set up. You don't necessarily have to do telemark turns on it, but you can use it to get up the hill if you want to ski with us. Yeah. And, uh, I had some of those kicker skins, um, on some of the steep parts. Cause, um, this guy, um, Oh my gosh, it's going to make me mad. I can't remember what, he, what his name is, but he gave me some, uh, I gave my skins to my buddy and, uh, this other guy gave me some scaled Valet BC skis right. and, some, and some kicker skins. And so I had to use the kicker skins on a few of the yep. really steep parts because I couldn't, there wasn't enough spot where I could even, uh, you know, zigzag back yep. and forth. Those things, those things work really well. And I'd actually want to get a, get a pair of them. Yeah. A friend of mine, I mounted uh, some Telemark bindings on some uh, G3 skis that they made like that. Yeah. Yeah, that they don't uh, they don't make anymore unfortunately. Cuz he, yeah. you know, we probably ski the same sort we ski the woods. We don't ski the trees. We just kind of <laughs> yeah, go out ski. and bash bash through the woods, right? <laughs> yeah, like, hope, hopefully somebody, you know, brush cut all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and and he's up uh in Collingwood, which is uh the northern part of the Niagara escarpment. And okay. uh, so he just, you know, throws his skis on, leaves from his house and takes off into the back country. And he's got some trails uh, that he knows of and he can descend through there and has lots of fun. And when he wants some more serious skiing, he just goes down to his uh, his ski club just down the road. Oh, really? That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. You know, it's interesting up there. They have private ski clubs. Say we have, uh, I, I've, I know of one in Wisconsin that I've been to for mountain biking. Um, but there's, I just learned of another one oh, really? here in Wisconsin. That's uh, just outside of Milwaukee, which is, yeah, it, private ski clubs are kind of crazy. And then when I look at, you know, like the elevation and the terrain that they offer, and I'm like, there's no gladed skiing and it's like 150 feet of elevation. And I'm like, I can pay less money for a season pass at a place that offers better terrain. Yeah. I think I'd rather do that. Yeah. See, I'm lucky I have friends, so they kind of sign me in, and uh, sometimes I get comped if, if it's this one race director. Because oh, really? we would run lots of events at his place, mm-hmm. and so I was bringing all sorts of business into him and that sort of stuff. So it's like I never expect that stuff. It's like, hey, Bill, I don't have anybody to sign me in. Can you sign me in today? He's like, sure. I show up there, I go to pay for my ticket, and they say, ah, no, Bill's got it. It's like, oh, cool, man. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, sweet. Like, yeah. thanks. I did, didn't, didn't expect it, but yeah. it always works. Yeah, we have a mountain at the cottage, Owl's Head. It was family-owned. It's just recently been sold the last, uh, I think, maybe three years ago, I guess. And okay. uh, they have a $99 ski pass that runs uh, seven days a week. Or say this year, start first ski day of ski season, 
and then mm -hmm. on Boxing Day it switches to um, Monday to Friday. Okay. And uh, like ninety nine bucks, like how how cheap is that? And then Say. and then um, on weekends the pass allows you to buy two adult tickets that are maximum half off. Lots of times there's even more off and oh, up, really? up to four kids. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Say we have a we have say Bohemia is a similar deal. Right. Cuz it's $99 pass. Right. For the whole year but the the addition of extra passes if you want to bring somebody is absolutely killer. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that we mostly it, it excludes us from skiing on the weekend, which me being retired, I don't want to be there when all the idiots are anyway. <laughs> but yeah. when I have family and friends come, then we can get to go ski, you know, at reduced rates. Yeah, you know? that's pretty killer. Yeah, it's awesome. And you know what? The new people who have bought it, they're locals. They're uh, marketing lawyers and mm -hmm. – and, uh, they're keeping it old school, just updating stuff, putting new chairs in, and uh, fixing up the lodge and that sort of stuff, building a couple of condos, keeping it on the low, not very Keep big. Yeah. yeah. And and if you make a wrong turn or two, you end up right in the U.S. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I was, I was skiing, uh, I think it's the weekend. When is Martin Luther King? Is, is that like mid-February? Yeah, February 9th, 18th or 19th. I yeah, so say. that's the same weekend as our family day. So I was skiing at the cottage that February, and then I heard somebody yell my name, and it was a former student, of, actually two former students of mine. They got married, and they were oh. down there, and uh, they were they had a Airbnb, and they went for a walk, and they kind of got off the trail, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the RCMP were there out in the middle of the woods. No way. Yep. Yeah, even though it's an undefended border, there's lots of listening devices in the woods. Oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, motion sensor. Yeah, so they were like, uh, you guys aren't from here, are you? And they're like, no. Well, you've, <laughs> you've crossed into the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, my gosh, that's kind of <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. Say, um, so uh, what got you into telemark? What got me into Telemark? Yeah. Like, so I, I touched on it briefly. It was, uh, I wanted to be able to tour in the Midwest. Yeah. And I didn't want to spend the money. Right. On, on split board. Right. And so, yeah, my buddy, my buddy told me, he's like, Hey, like, you know, you should try it out. Uh, a hundred bucks for that, those Dawn patrols and free for the, uh, free for the boots. So I yeah. was like, well, I guess that works for me. Um, I kind of, uh, took on from there it was more of a getting to getting to know how to ski for right. a while yeah. um i was nobody that i knew at the time had telemark skied um you think here so i yeah i took that took the self-help book and kind of just went with it and uh i really enjoyed um the actual turn itself and i kind of kept getting drawn back to it because as a snowboarder, I was, and I, I had never stepped on skis previous to anything. So I went straight to Telemark and just kind of like went for it. And yeah. I think, um, uh, Craig, Craig Dosty just did that, uh, recent, uh, Dosty's view on backwards ice skating. Right. And, and I was like, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. Cause, and especially as a goalie, all I'm doing is, backwards skating half the time exactly and so it it, it kind of came natural ish right. i was definitely like you know like pizza french fry way too much to start because i'm like i have yep. never done this before yeah um but then it was just i was just going through all the motions and figuring it out and i was able to uh get into actually what a turn is supposed to feel like i was you know i was like fake a marking for a while i was doing the um parallel a mark parallel telepine then, yeah i was like <laughs> oh well you know i'm kind of doing the turns yeah, and, but we all do that yeah it, i mean it's fine 
Yeah. Uh, it was after it was after about like a, a half a day of me on the bunny hill, attempting to link turns together, um, for what I thought was Telemark, uh, at the time, and then I started you know, going on like our the larger runs and kind of doing that, and I was kind of uh, just kind of hooked on the on the way the turn felt because every you know one out of every 30 turns or so I would have one where I'm like, Whoa, like, okay, that's what it's supposed to be. And I'm like, how did I do that? Yep. <laughs> that's like me. I'll do runs all day long. And then it's like, Oh yeah, that was a solid run. Yeah. Like, Oh, like, wait a second. <laughs> what happened there? Yeah. And as, as a former instructor, I uh, would, I would take, uh, we would, uh, a friend of mine had a traveling telemark ski school. Oh really? Yeah, and we would service all the private clubs uh, clubs up in Collingwood and and a few of the public ones, and uh, so I would take solid skiers, and you want them to get hooked, you want to have fun, and so my friend Mark, who was on our national Telemark race team and and an instructor with me, he says uh, his email signature underneath his name says Alpine skiers parallel because they must, Telemark <laughs> skiers parallel because we can. <laughs> so i would take a solid alpine skier and that's their safe zone right yeah and we would do alpine turns they can't believe like uh i don't have to have my heel attached it's like no you got to be yeah. a better got to be a better skier and then so we would just do alpine turns a few runs like that they'd feel comfortable and i said so what we're going to do now is we're going to do an alpine turn and complete the entire turn and traverse the hill and then practice the telemark stance. And then I would show them, yep. or I would ask them what they thought was a telemark stance. And they're way too exaggerated. You, got, you know, can't put a, too much weight on their back foot, and whatever. And we just do this statically. And then I, I would just ch show them how to do it. Because uh, I'm a short stance guy. Yep. So fore and aft. And... Yep. Uh, so I had a friend that I was teaching one day, and she's an older woman, and I had come up with the idea, because my background is phys ed, and I was like, okay. this must be what like skiing in a miniskirt is like. And she says, no, it's not. It's like skiing in a pencil skirt. So your knees, your, your thighs are kept together pretty yep. much, and your knees, and you're just dropping that lower half back but mm -hmm. you're getting all the energy and stuff because you're pushing out yep. as, as you turn. So so when I would teach and I would teach women and they're like, how do you know about pencil skiing and pencil skirts? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I've been told by a watch woman back in the day. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's funny when, with the, with the pencil skirts, cause I, I, so me, I've known as, the party guy, the drinker. No, uh, really? No, 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 I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I will say, uh, especially in Wisconsin, and everybody loves drinking um, all of what, what is old fashions. And so I'll say in the, the thing in the, in that telemark tip book was, you know, squeeze the orange between yeah. your knees. knees exactly. And I'll just tell people, just keep that old fashioned straight up. and You'll be all right. You got to keep it squeezed. <laughs> it's exact. It, just keeping them tight. It, it works. It's, it's pretty funny. And what's also really funny is the, the way you say you would, it was the traveling telemark ski school. My, my really good buddy, Nick Brissett, who is a big part of uh, Midwest Telly dads. And he runs the, uh, Lower Peninsula Pinhead Reunion, okay, which which is at uh, Caberfe Peaks in January. Uh, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be the third year this year is when the, is, is that's going on. Where but, where's Caberfe Peaks? Caberfe Peaks is in uh, Cadillac, Michigan. Oh, okay, which which is south of Traverse City. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I've I've skied at Boyne Mountain. Yep, I so... was actually just there not too long ago. For oh really? Wedding. Oh cool. Oh, that's those are the posts that I saw the wedding posts. Yep. Okay. <laughs> On Instagram. Oh yeah, those were good. Nice. Nice. Yes. So, yeah, so after I'd skied there and found shaggy skis, mm -hmm. I uh, 
started looking around to see what other ski areas there are around uh, northern lower peninsula. There's a ton. Of, there's um, there's Nubs Knob. Right. There's Shus Mountain. There. So there's Boyne uh, Highlands, which is another ski resort. Right. Uh, there's Crystal Mountain. There's Caberfe. There's Mancelona. There, what used to be Thunder. There's, um, oh, there, there's this one that's actually up near Sleeping Bear Dunes. Um, you can actually see the dunes, and it skis down to the lake, I believe. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I just saw it recently, and I was like, oh my god, like I need to ski there because right. that looks incredible. But yeah, there's there's a ton. Of skiing up there, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's that, absolutely. Well, that that's like in and around here. So Toronto being the center, there's mm-hmm. there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, and there's a little t- couple little tiny hills right in Toronto. You oh, ski, really? ski down into a ravine. Yeah, it might be like a hundred foot vert, but it's a great place to teach. That we had this program in Toronto that we teach telemark skiing, and my buddy Mark, who yeah. I mentioned before, he'd show up to teach and he'd get off the bus, get off the city bus <laughs> with all his gear. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh my god, that's awesome. Because my 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 buddy Nick is the same way he has um he's got this astro van that is he he had converted at a point was living in idaho came back to michigan where he's from and he has this he has a ski box on top that has maybe i don't know 10 sets of telemark skis wow and and they're all they're all hammerheads pretty much on there and so whatever size you want we, we we can have it that's and he's cool. got t- tons of boots all the time. And he's just like, hey, you guys want to, you know, you guys want to try it out? And then, like, you know, we have uh, this whole crew of people that are skiing, like, a tiny resort. Yeah. Like, you know, like, 200 feet vertical. But, like, everybody's trying out Telemark. And then it's just, you know, growing the scene. And then now um, now we've seen a few of them uh, have moved out to, you know, Montana and moved out to Salt Lake. And now they're, like, Hey, like I still tell Mark, like that's right. It's yeah. more, it's like uh, we're trying to get into it again rather than um, full bore. But it's it's nice because like they have the foundation. They're like, you know, why not? I've been alpine skiing for how long? Like, let's try this new thing, and it's really really cool to see. And it, it, he's absolute blast to ski with. It's it's a lot of fun to um, allow that progression, and that's what I've been doing with. Um, when I had a bunch of skis before I sold them off to uh, a bunch of friends to get them into it, it was just like, Hey, like, hopefully you're my shoe size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try it out. We'll figure, <laughs> we'll figure it out later. Type of thing. Well, I always say that telemark is to skiing. What fly fishing is to fishing. Yep. Yep. It's finesse. It's more just, way more involved you have to think about every little thing it's it's crazy and and especially like uh fly fishing is fly fishing all the time is what learning telemark is yeah because after you have gotten down i mean you know as soon as you get your roll cast down you know what's going on in fly fishing but and then as soon as you know what a turn feels like then you strive for that again because you know if you roll cast like oh i went under that went under that uh rock garden and then you know went under that uh branch and i you know got my fly tied up onto a branch something like that because you're always striving for what it could be yes you're not always going to get it yes yeah yeah that's exactly like telemark you're always always working yeah always working And, and that's what makes it um that's uh, I know um, Madsen has said this uh, previously is, you know, the Midwest is what, um, what Telmark should strive to, you know, thrive within because we have these resorts that are, you know, 
200 feet, 300 feet. You know, we, you have the few that are, you know, 600 feet if yep. you go up north, but you can't get there all the time. And how long of a, how long of a drive it is, is it to uh, Bohemia for you? Uh, so it, currently it's five hours, okay. um, but I am moving down to Milwaukee, so it's going to be six hours. Okay. So it's not the it's not the worst. Um, my buddies and I will get in the car and um, driver will drive, and then the rest of us will drink <laughs> until we get there, basically. <laughs> nice. nice. So. Um, so Bohemia is not far and that's like, that's like, you know, top tier premier stuff. Like, right. uh, yeah, Matt, it, but, Josh was blown away by what was there. And I think Taylor, w- did you ski there when Taylor was there for the Midwest Telefest? Yeah. So they came to, uh, so let me see here. So they, they met up with Keith. Um, Keith is the yeah. owner of the, you know, free hill life Midwest and he's been running yeah. Midwest Telefest for, oh, I don't know how long. Um, I think like 10, 12 years now. Right. And so he, he met up with them. He met up with Keith, his wife, and his son, who are all Telemark skiers, which is really cool. And uh, they went to Whitecap, which is in the town, uh, which is just outside of the town of Hurley, right. which is the most populous, not, not most populous, uh, the highest concentration of strip clubs <laughs> anywhere in the U S is in Hurley, Wisconsin, which is on the border of uh, Wisconsin and the UP, which is right over by where uh, the stormy Cromer factory is. If okay. You know stormy I do. I have a few of their caps. Yes. I know the story. I love Stormies. And everybody I, I, around me ridicules me. What do you got your goddamn Elmer Foot hat on for? I said, man, you want to hear the story? And I would tell them the story. And they're like, yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Right? Yeah. It, it's really sweet. I love I, I love my Stormies. And I, I found my the first one that I owned, I actually found out in a thrift store in Maine. Okay. You know, and <laughs> just like, I'm <laughs> like, oh, that's my size. Like, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, so, but yet with, uh, with Taylor and Josh, um, so Josh came out the first year, met up with, uh, those guys and he came up to the Porky's, which is where Midwest Telefest is. Uh, Porky's is arguably my favorite ski resort in the Midwest. Right. Just, just because of how minimal and how secluded it is, um, they have one chairlift. Right. And so you go up the chairlift. You can either go down Hollywood under the lift. You can go this big green around. You can go one blue around or um, you go like these two other blue or black runs, you know, got and there's woods that are gladed by us telemarkers. Right. Um, JT Robinson and uh, um what else am I thinking of here? Uh, Keith and uh, Matt Manders and that crew um, go up every fall for a, you know, lopping fest and, uh, you know, glade some new runs for us. Right. And so what's, what's really cool is there's a lot of different gladed runs with uh, different cliffs, uh, different pitches that are actually, there's some pretty steep stuff over there. Um, and that's just off the main chairlift that you can access. And right. then, from there, you can, you know, basically skate ski over to a tow rope that takes you to the farther west side of the hill that will open you up to, it's called Porky's Pl- uh, Porcupine Plunge, which is a old, um, old lift line. And it's just absolutely everywhere. And it, there's always a lot of really good snow during the middle of the day. Um, and a lot of the stuff over there doesn't get touched very often because people are just skiing the lift. Right. Right. And, um, but it's just a lot, a lot of fun. And, um, I was, I, I was, I've been there the past two years for, I've been Telefest past three years. I won, uh, first year I was there, I actually won the chili cook off. Oh, nice. Um, so JT Robinson's mom and myself are, uh, big feuding heads at the, <laughs> at the chili cook off. Every year she's like, I'm taking you down, Mitchell. And I'm like, there's no fucking way. <laughs> like, I got, 
she she pulled out some pretty pretty solid moves uh two years ago um uh, was uh 29 20 yeah 2019 or 2020 um yeah 2020 she pulled out stuff because uh covid what hadn't officially right said it 20 2020 february um yeah, she pulled out some solid moves, and she got me on the chili, uh, the chili cook off that day. But uh, <laughs> what do they look yeah. for? What do they look for in your chili? Uh, I don't know. I think it, it just depends on the crew. Um, right. There was a so the first year I've I've had the same chili recipe, so I, I come back with it because it's consistent, and I've won chili rec- chili cook offs outside of Midwest Telly Fest before. Okay. Uh, with the same recipe, so it's just classically spicy it's um it coagulates pretty well uh not pretty not runny right um solid just like a hearty flavor yeah uh i'm not necessarily i'll i don't get i should i shouldn't say this year i don't get too experimental in the regards of you know like white chicken chilies right. and vegan chilies and things like that but i i stick traditional yep but i add flares within traditional right, right, to right. set it apart where it's like, okay, this is what a chili should feel like. And we have these crazy flavors going on. Right. Yeah. We, we, uh, my daughter lives up in the middle of 541 acres. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> She's got one acre of the 541, but in the winter time we're able to use, it's a big uh, cash crop fields. And in the back is a forest, and then across the road is a forty-acre valley and stuff. So the, mm-hmm. uh, she takes care of the farmer's land and watches things. So he lets us uh, play out there. <clears throat> so we have this awesome garden out there, and uh, so we've been uh, growing a bunch of different peppers this year and stuff. The tomatoes oh, are really? nuts. So the the ladies have been putting up all sorts of different salsas. So my wife Sean, oh. she decided. Okay, well, we're going to put some of these peppers in. How's that? So we truly have mild, medium, medium hot, hot. Mm -hmm. And then I told her, she made the hot stuff yesterday. I said, this is good, but next time let's put two scotch bonnets in it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, And then today, yeah, so there there is some good solid heat. And then uh, today she made some salsa verde. Mm Mm-hmm. And... It's primo. It's got decent heat. She thinks it's too much. She's a lightweight when it comes to heat. Say, I I am the guy where I will tell somebody that something is not hot, and then they have to use milk because <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you put me through? <laughs> yeah, I, I like the heat too, and I, I experimented. We had tacos today, and so she makes her own tortillas. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. and in uh, Windsor, there's this uh, shop where a butcher shop. And uh, my daughter found out they make this uh, garlic spread. It's like sour cream. Okay. And it's it, it's just garlic and water, I think, and it's just pulverized and whipped. Really. So I was expecting a lot of heat from the uh, from the salsa verde that I put on my tacos, but I guess that garlic dip has the same neutralizing effect as sour cream would, but. Yep. It has the garlic taste, so it's. I was like, man, these these are the best tacos you have ever made. Oh my gosh! Yeah, see, I, that actually surprises me because normally when I add when I make my own hummus, yep, I add ungodly amounts of garlic, right? And it's spicy because of the garlic, but I'm surprised that it was neutralizing. Yeah, in that way. Yeah, and this garlic spread, uh, we just open it up and dip chips in it. You know, like yeah, oh, you can yeah. put it on whatever you want. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'll see my wife eating it. And I was like, okay, I better have some. Cause you know what? I'm sleeping with you tonight. You'll be seething garlic on me. <laughs> right. As long as it's reciprocated. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Say, uh, you have been to Snowflea before. I have Which not. Way? What you have not? No, I just know Ann and Robin oh. through a mutual friend who's a telemark instructor and he skis at Search Mount. So when I went up to yeah. visit John two years ago, um, he says, Oh, you gotta meet Ann. So we met Ann. Yeah. 
I hit it off. You know, we were. He was looking at my skis because I have uh, Free Hill Life switchblades. Oh, what what, uh, what year was those? Twenty fifteen. I don't know, but I have the very first pair. Really? I asked. I asked Josh to. What's that? How they let you get that very first pair? Uh, I'm friends with Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because he, I, I, I keep in touch with him a lot and that yeah. sort of stuff. So. Yeah, I bought those, and so N looked at those. I was like, "We want to trade?" He goes, "Sure." So, and and he had a pair of DPS wide boards. I'd oh, never, I'd really never ski. Good. Yeah, I've never skied really wide boards, so it took me a couple of turns to figure out how to work them. Yep. But everybody loves those switchblades. So now Josh has got the Protector series out. Yeah, the protector of the turns, right? Yeah, so I told him, I said, okay, so I bought your very first pair of your first skis that you ever made. It makes sense that I'll buy, hopefully, your very first pair of protector 95s. So, is that so? Uh, what I, I, I know that they're making them. Are there 95s and 105s? Oh, 95s and 105s. Okay, yeah, yeah, so interesting. And when I talked to Taylor, because you know, you send an email, you're interested, they call you, they tell you all about the ski and this, that, and the other thing. So they're not unlike the switchblades. And I'm they're I'm, not unlike. Okay. Yeah. So probably a different flex pattern out. Yeah. After time different wood. Through. Different wood in it, I think. Uh yeah. So and then the one oh fives, I think they might be like the rude boys. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I know um Alex LeBlanc out in new mexico he sees yep. those quite a bit yeah i know i was uh i've never been able to try uh ntn until i went to visit josh and uh, my 75 millimeter boots are 31 and a half t races oh lord yeah or 31 t races anyway so we got up early in the morning and molded a pair of uh of liners and i crushed my foot into 29 <laughs> And I went skiing. Oh. I went skiing on a pair of, uh, oh, you know what? I think they were the eight hundred ones, which is the pre predecessor to the Rude Boy. Yep. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. And they were all excited for me to get on them because they had accidentally made them a little stiff. Okay. And you know, I'm six foot six, two hundred and seventy five, two hundred and eighty pounds, right? Yeah, they probably fit you proper. Uh, yeah. Well, I got I got back at the end of the day, and I was like, I want these skis. And Josh says, you can't have them. <laughs> I was like, oh. And even when oh. I went to visit him on my big road trip in 2018, it's like, dude, those are my skis. And he goes, no, you can't have them. <laughs> Why? That's That, that blows me because away. Because they were the first pair of the 801s, the very first pair of 801s that he made. So, you, I mean, but you have the very first pair of the switchblades. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, because you know what? I had skied at Brighton that day. And, oh, yeah. and, uh, you know what? They handled everything because we got, I hit the storm cycle right that week. I've never really traveled anywhere to ski except in okay. the East. And it was the end of year party Josh was having. So I said to my wife, Hey, we should go and surprise Josh at this end of year barbecue that he's having. And she's like, You don't even like airplanes. And I was like, <laughs> Well, she goes, you're like going to spend six hours in an airport and fly. I said, what's the difference of me going to Jay Peak, skiing, and then driving six hours home? Anyway, so she's looking, and yep. so that idea was poo-pooed. But then she says to me, I can send you to Utah. And I was like, damn straight you're going to do that because you said that. <laughs> so she found out that the uh, off-peak off travel peak to Utah from Toronto is December, January. I was like, are you kidding me? That's prime ski season. Like, yeah. Wait a second. Really? Yeah. So I, I, yeah, made arrangements and flew down there, rented a car and met with the crew. And I get up in the morning and take off to go ski real early while they were almost all still asleep. Oh, and, really? <laughs> yeah. That, they're that, they're like that, snowboarders. They get to the hill at crack of noon, according to my world. That that is surprising to me because when they were at Midwest Telefest, right, they were very reserved. We had I had to forcibly bring them to our hotel, basically. Oh, really? 
Oh, they yeah, they were not about it. And I was just like, you guys, got, if you're going to come to the Midwest and you're going to come to this festival, you have to party oh, yeah. with us. Right. And we were, we, we had, we even, I don't know if you know about it, Carling's Black Label. Yes. Hey, Mabel, had, bring me a Black Label. Yes. That was my grandpa's beer. And we had, we had a case of it. And I was like, you guys got to come. <laughs> And they finally cracked on the Saturday night, and they came and party. And then I think now, after hearing, they're all just like, "We want to come back now." Right. And I'm like, exactly. Like you guys had, there was there was the breaking point of partying with the crew, right? That needed to happen. Yeah. Well, when I was down there, it wasn't because they were partying. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're younger. Uh, you know what? I ski. I get up. I go to the cottage. I'm there to ski. I remember one of my last trips with my sister and some friends. It's like, yeah, it's 10 o'clock. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. I get up at 5, make lunch for everybody, get breakfast mm-hmm. organized, and the ski bus leaves, leaves at 7. Oh, man, you, you're you late on my books. Well, he's just. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's because I had hey. those guys. Yeah, exa- exactly. I like, so, to, I like to get places for first chair. Oh no, I understand, uh, but the the seven aspect is, you're well, you're also uh, much closer to the ski hill than I am. Well, sometimes, uh, yeah, yeah. So like that one day it was, I think we left maybe six thirty because we went to Sunday River, which is two hours away. Yep, it, you know? yep. That's what. Uh, so Granite Peak is my hill that I generally go to, especially around where I live now. It's a uh, hour 45 from where I am. Right. And I'll be at the bar, you know, Friday night, it's one 30 in the morning and people are, people are like, are we going skiing tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I'm leaving at six. Like, what are you talking about? Right. And, and they're just like, I don't want, like, I don't want to go skiing if that's what you're doing. I'm like, well, I'm <laughs> not going to not go ski. Yeah. And I'm not going to wake up at nine and I'm like, get there at noon I'm like I'm going skiing like exactly. in the morning. I don't I don't care. <laughs> like we're going. Oh, I've always been like that. When I was a kid, I grew up working on farms, and I remember okay. when I was of the age because I, I worked in Quebec, and yep. uh, so I'd go to the clubs. I'd get home at like one one thirty, and this old guy that at one farm I worked on, he liked milking at three a.m. Mm-hmm. So I'd get to the cottage, crash for an hour and a half too get up and i remember this one time i was going to feed the calves i had two buckets of milk and the back of the barn the wall started moving away i was like damn i'm never gonna get to the end of this (laughs) (laughs) so we finish milking i go back to the cottage my buddy is there it's 5 30 and it's like dude want to go fishing he's like what time is it it's 5 30 don't you have to go do chores no i'm done what (laughs) <laughs> so for most I figured it out already don't worry about yeah, it yeah 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 exactly yeah so oh that's that's awesome yeah yeah i i i definitely am uh so fun bit <laughs> a big thing that happened this past year that relates to this well is we so my but my roommate and i jake met up with my buddy willie um uh willie tuts who for it was for um it was for telefest this past year so i call so i knew taylor and wyatt were coming out um uh let me see here devin wright and yep. um, maria Napi were supposed to come out um for that but they had uh there's a complication there but we so it was my but my roommate jake my buddy willie and then my buddy darren was also he's on uh the lower peninsula side uh we all met up at willie's place because he had been living up there uh his parents cottage that was you know maybe 20 minutes from there and we got up and uh we played euchre i think until 2 30 in the morning <laughs> and i had been calling i've been calling taylor and wyatt all day i'm like you guys are gonna come like we're gonna go in the morning before the lifts open, we're going to, you know, go climb up because, um, what happened was the weekend previous, there was not enough people to run the tow rope at 
the at the Porkies. Right. And so they had been they had gotten a 12 inch storm day on Sunday when they didn't open. Uh, okay, so Porkies are only open from Friday to Monday. Right. Yep. So on Sunday they got a 12 inch storm, maybe 16. And then Monday they got, you know, another eight and the tow rope, both those days was not running. So all of that stuff that was over there was not getting touched. And then throughout the week, there was another six inch storm. There was a four inch storm, a three inch storm. And then the Thursday night that we got in there, there was an eight inch storm. Wow. And so that whole area, we're like, we have to go hit that before anybody else does. Right. And yeah. so we, we, we decided that we were going to go tour up the hill before, uh, you know, before everything opened up for Telefest because we're like, we want to have the first turns of Telefest. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we were up playing Euchre until 2.30, you know, friggin' listening to music and drinking hams all night. <laughs> and and we're like, oh, man. And we kept calling those guys, uh, Free Hill Life guys. We're like, you guys got to come. They're like, oh, you know, we'll see how it goes. We're like, come on. Like, these are going to be the best turns of the weekend. Yeah. And they kind of just, like, they, they faltered out. And then we had to, we ended up getting up. We fell asleep around 2.33. And then we woke up at 5. And we left. And we were like, we got to go. We got to go ski. Yep. And it, it, it just doesn't matter. And I, you're the same way. Like, you know what? I'm here to do what I, I'm here to do. And I'm here to ski. Yep. And that's, that's what our group was like. And it was hilarious. And. We we we're, you know, climbing up thigh deep. Right. Snow. That's crazy. And it was just, and then we, you know, hit it on the way down. It was the best turns of the weekend. Yeah. I would have been yeah. like that when I was younger, but being almost 30 years older than you, I would imagine I was like, yeah, no, I, I'm not into homie. Don't play that no more. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that no more. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. I understand that. <laughs> See, um, that's, that's, uh, 55 years, 54 years of playing collision style sports. Let's say how you're 62. No, I'm well. Okay. So I'm, I'm 58. I'll be 58 on Friday. Okay. So not bad. Then. <clears throat> no, no, good. but yeah, no, I have a, a diagnosed chronic arthritis bone on bone in my right knee. And I, oh, think, no. I think I made it worse when I was working on my buddy's roof and I slipped off his roof and landed on my feet, tumbled and rolled. Yep, that will do it. But I also it. tore my ACL playing university basketball uh, in that same knee, you know. And then I was okay. just, you know, thinking about all of my injuries, that all the broken bones that I've had in my life. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like that, yeah. that will compound and that will do it. <laughs> yep. So it's See. like, you know, we, we eat a little bit of a weedy cookie at night to help you sleep. It helps manage the pain. <laughs> there you go. We hot tub and we drink this uh, tart cherry juice. And you know what? Some days I got a lot of pain. Today I was working out and I was like, yeah, you know what? I've got to make sure because it's been a couple of weeks since, since I worked out. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I was actually uh, figured out with this gym apparatus that I have how to... Uh, um, do telemark turns or like the, the motion and all that sort of stuff. So it's like, Oh yeah. I saw that is, on your Instagram. It yeah. Was like a, it yeah. Was it's a, called reg fit. It's a bar that you can put it on your feet and you can do curls or whatever. It's, it's like so easy to adjust. I got the one that comes with six bands and it's got an okay. app with a hundred exercises anyway. So I was oh like God. fooling around with it. And I was like, you know what? I think if I do this, it's like a telemark turn. So I get into the tele stance and just, up and down, constant tension. Yep. Yeah. So I, I know it. Yep. Yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah, because everybody's sweet. trying to figure out how do you prepare for telemark skiing, and the only thing I can think of is that I've experienced is when I'm at the cottage, mm -hmm. we'll go hiking, and when you're coming down a mountain, that yep. that jolt or whatever it is when you plant that l first step down. Every mm -hmm. time, that's what a telemark turn is like. So I'm, I kind of yeah. think the best training for telemark is to go hiking in the fall. 
I can see it. <clears throat> on on I, on uphill downhill terrain, not flat terrain. Yeah, yeah, something that's actually going to put some work into you. Yeah, yeah. Say, I'm I'm trying to think here. I uh, for my training for telemark season big into cycling in yep. the regards of gravel riding mountain biking things like that that's more i think that's more to keep my fitness but like for my legs like i used to i mean i'm, I'm definitely big into weightlifting and squatting i do you know two leg days a week and squatting's big to get that yep. you know muscle back but it's uh i put on too much too much weight covid but... covid uh yeah i definitely put a hurt into it <laughs> i definitely put a hurt into it it yeah. was uh it was brutal but I, I think i just need to get on the uh get on the bike a little bit more i always ha- i always go in you know waves of i'm oh, i'm really into cycling all right maybe right not now well i spent 30 years of commuting to work by bike even in the winter time really yeah yeah so i know all the back i know all the roads in our county <laughs> you know, I, I've recently met up with a friend, and he's a retired uh, OPP sergeant. Okay. And and he his patrol was our county. So even though he's driven all the roads, he and I could have great conversations because I've ridden them all, so we know all the roads, same roads. Oh, that's, that's awesome. A, yeah, and he's just gotten into cycling, so that's been pretty cool. That's sweet. Yeah, I've... Uh... I was a big road cyclist doing uh ragbri if you've ever yes, heard of it. Yes, I have. That's Now is it yeah. is it still on? Like do they still run it? Uh I think this past year they did not. Right. Okay. No. no, no. This past year they did. <clears throat> 2020 they did not right. because of COVID. Okay. And I think we're looking towards doing it in 20 20- 22 okay cool yeah because that's uh yeah i've always heard of that there's there's some good tours out there that i'd like to do oh my god it's it's crazy and my uh so my girlfriend's mom's friends or grandparents friends or something told me about it and i got really into road cycling through that and that was the best thing that i could have ever done for my body because i rode you know like the 1500 miles that they tell you to ride before even wow do it and that's it's awesome and i would highly recommend anybody to do rag ride if you want it's just a uh big traveling caravan uh, caravan of just partying right. Twenty thousand people wow. going across the state of iowa it's ridiculous wow yeah that's fun so if you're if you're into it let me know and okay. the the fiftieth anniversary is coming up, so you know oh, they're gonna do be, something crazy yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah, I know. I, I I have a great buddy. I he, he got into cycling after he met me, and I would say things to him, and it's like, hey, you want to ride a hundred k? Sure. He'd never ridden a hundred k, or maybe it was ninety k. Then one time I came up with, you want to ride around Lake Ontario? Okay. So the <laughs> first day we have to go. I'm an hour east of Toronto. We had to get past Toronto, so. I think the first day we may have ridden 150k, 140k. Oh my god! So we would we would alternate our days. So we would do 150k one day, yep. 90k the next day, 150, okay. 160k. Yeah, so we got around the lake in five days, and uh, oh or six god. days, <clears throat> and then uh, one day I came up with uh, this idea that we're going to ride Port Hope, Kingston, Port Hope. That's 300, okay. 321 kilometers in one day. Oh, my God. No way. Yeah. Took us 12 hours. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> That's unreal. Yeah. So I learned I learned that the trick is to uh, take a different set of riding clothing, different gloves, different uh, shorts, because yep. the different manufacturers have different pressure points. Yep. And and then so we changed. We went to my aunt's house in Kingston, and we changed there. Had lunch, and it was kind of funny because Jeff, he's he may be listening to this, uh, and he, he says to me, "You know what? We have to eat a thousand calories an hour." It's like, dude, I can't eat that. And and he <laughs> he shows me this bundle of uh, power gel and power bars. Yep. And it's like ah, I can't eat that. So I I. 
old school. I go get a half a dozen bagels, cut them in half, oh. peanut butter on each half, slam them together, and every couple hours stop and have a bagel. Yeah, put them in your jersey pockets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then nice. we got maybe two-thirds of the way through, three-quarters of the way through, and it's like, I can't eat any more of these freaking bagels. <laughs> I need a different taste in my mouth. So we stopped at Subway, grabbed – I think we shared a half a sub just to get a different taste in our mouth. Just like I need, I just need something else. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. classic. <laughs> it's so ragbri. It's not as nutritious, not as healthy conscious as that. Right. But it's uh, you go anywhere from you know forty five to eighty five miles, or if you do the century day, you do a century that day. Yeah. Um. And you go drink two beers, watch, you know, watch the band, watch, uh, you know, backyard ladder match wrestling, right? <laughs> uh, you know, just anything, you know, or you stop at some random guy's house that's got free corn on the side of the road, right? Or you stop at the dude, uh, he's got a humongous uh, slip and slide going on, right? And and you just you, and that's where you stop you drink yeah, and then you keep going. Right. That's right. where your carbohydrates come in <laughs> to allow yourself to actually keep going. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. It's classic. Um, so, okay. Back to N and Robin. Yeah. I, I think this year, if things go correct, I'll be able to cross the border yeah. and go. Yeah. We need to do that. Okay. All right, we'll make a plan, make a date. Make a date. Meet at Snowflea. Meet at Snowflea. Because I know my buddy Woody, oh, I could crash at Woody's place. Well, that's what I did last time. And he just recently bought uh, five acres that adjoins to Search Mount Ski Resort there, and there's a cabin oh, really? and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so it would be kind of awesome. Yeah, and then Robin have a sweet setup. Have you been to... Yes. Snowflake. Okay, cool. I've been, I've been one time. It was uh, 2018. I was there. Um, we had a really good snow day on Saturday, maybe, maybe about a foot, maybe a little bit more. Um, but then it rained hard on Sunday. So oh, we kind of got screwed yeah. with that one, but yeah, that place is awesome. And I definitely want to go there again. Yeah. Um, then uh, we were talking about with like the our road trip out east this year. Yeah. Uh, to Jay Peak, and we're going to Saddleback and Cannon and Black, um, and Wildcat. I don't. I want to say maybe. Right. But uh, we're just doing it based on the Indy Pass, whatever. Oh yes. Yep. So whatever's on that one, we're just gonna car camp that night and then go wherever it needs to be that night after we apray yeah and then set up camp and then ski in the morning you should make um, a make a stop at uh ellicottville there's a huge telemark crew there and uh, one of the guys i interviewed a friend of mine uh, adam sourwin mr adam x he's on instagram and uh, okay. he'll work there infrequently and uh yeah he's a telemark skier and He's uh, got stashes all over the place where you can ski and not have to pay. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's should... Ellicottville? Yes, it's south of Buffalo. So I'm going to hypothesize. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're going to – you'll probably be going down through the interstate – what is that, Interstate 90? That goes uh, along the bottom of uh, Lake Erie from Lake Cleveland to Buffalo? Yeah, I, th- I think it's, it's, the, it's 80, 90 – across the south yeah. end yeah. and then it splits right yeah, yeah. anyway okay. so it's it's just south of there there's a huge yeah hollymont is a private club that's open to the public during the week and then you have okay. holiday valley and that sort of stuff so wh- when are you when are you thinking of doing that road trip any dates so i think um based on experience of being out there we're looking at late february early march okay so if you Check out the city garage. They do tele stock. Yes. Tele stock. I've, I've heard of I've heard of the city garage. Yes. I've not heard of tele stock. Yes. No, no, I actually may have heard of tele stock. 
Um, but I know of the city garage, but I don't know where in New York that is. Yeah. So that's in Ellicottville. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's a great, if you're looking for accommodations, there's a great hotel in Salamanca. It's uh, in Holiday Inn and Suites Express. It's not expensive. It's like 15 minutes from the hill from Ellicottville. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the guys at City Garage are awesome because we don't have too many. Well, we don't have any more retailers of telemark equipment out here in Canada or in Ontario anyway. So really? I send everybody down to the City Garage. Even with <clears throat> uh, Scott in the area? Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't have any retailers. Which kind of sucks. Yep. That does kind of suck. Yeah. Yeah, but that'll be sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's so. a there's a guy I interviewed, um, Old Growth Ski Company out of Buffalo, Jonathan. Heard, uh, yeah, Jonathan Capozzi. Yeah. So he's he skis down in that area. So you should you know if you're gonna go that way, you should hit those guys up. Trey. He's, Trey. Yeah, he's at uh, City Garage. Adam. He's a uh, uh, a free heart. He's all over the place. He lives in a van. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Hell and yeah. then and then there's Jonathan. Yeah. So I want to get down and try some of Jonathan's skis. I'm a sucker for uh, wood finished skis. Oh my gosh. There's uh there's this guy that I that he he got me some, got me on his skis this past year. Um, it's Powdered North. They originally were out of Appleton, which is pretty close to where I am right now. Um, but he just moved up to the Keweenaw okay. up near Bohemia. Yeah. So he's going to run a ski shop where he can oh, cool. rent his skis, demo out and everything like that. And he's got some crazy wood finishes. If you know, uh, Joey Wallace, yes. has, yep. he has <laughs> some of his, uh, wood finished skis and they look really good. Oh my God. Nice. I love say Joey Wallace is uh, an absolute character. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! I he's incredible, and he's he's uh he's definitely the person that taught me how to telemark correctly. Nice. Because he, because you know, as uh, Bohemia TV, yes, he's the the filmer for that, and so I knew of him because he knew me through my partying at Bohemia. Right. And he's like, Mitch, like, let's ski together. Like, let's do this. And I was like, all right. And then, um, at the time I was a snowboarder and then I figured out he was a telemark skier and I was getting into it. And he's like, follow me, follow these lines. I'll show you how to telemark in the trees. And he is the reason why I can actually telemark in the trees. Yeah. See, I can't do that, man. Cause I don't know. Maybe my skis are too long. I can't turn that fast. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I had I had some one eighty fours. I have one eighties now. I feel like if I actually want to be able to ski well in the trees, I got to go one seventy sixes. Right. Something around there. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, he he taught me how to ski in the trees, which is uh, and skiing at Bohemia, you're you're not necessarily actually carving anything. You're just floating uh you're turning and falling down right <laughs> you're just like hopefully i have enough snow to push against that i can keep falling right without running into something yeah there there's a i remember taking some of my family to uh snow ridge which is on the eastern shore of lake ontario <clears throat> and okay. it's an 800 i think it's an 800 foot vertical resort i don't know how many runs they have but all I know is they only have eight snow guns because that's all they need. And they get slammed yep. with lake effect. You said it's on the east side of Ontario? Well, it's in New uh, it's in New York. Okay. Yeah, and it's on the eastern shore. It's near Watertown, not far from Watertown, New York. And oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. And um, so oh, I, yeah, lake effect there is oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And... Uh, We've ski like they'll they'll groom just the middle third of their runs and leave the outside thirds ungroomed. Yep. And my daughter's boyfriend wasn't too happy with that because he just got back into skiing or snowboarding, and there's nothing pushing back when you go to turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a groomed run. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. So <laughs> this 
this guy Chris at uh, at Granite Peak where I go. He's a really old school Telemark guy. Always wears a Boston Bruins, right? Um, Adam Sandler jersey <laughs> when he goes skiing. But I I would ski with him every once in a while because he's a Telemark guy, and I'd always see him like, "Oh, Chris, like, what's going on? Like, let's get some turns together." He's like, "You got hams?" And I'm like, "I got hams, like guaranteed." <laughs> and so we'd ski together, and we and he taught me that the best skiing is always on the outside of yes runs yes and and that's what he's like this is how i learned to make tight turns is because i want the good snow right i'm like oh man this makes sense but yeah it's funny that they only uh they only do like the middle third of the run yeah i like that yeah i like that a lot yeah i was uh at burke mountain which is uh yep ski academy oh dear okay so i i was there with a friend in uh, late december a few years ago and uh, I had my Ontario racing jacket on and they had the ski academy going. So they've got uh, four courses, two, one stacked on top of the other. So the kids, the racers come down, they get their info from their coach. They run a course. There's uh, a coach in the middle. He debriefs them and then they back into the gates. So there are two lines like that. So it was lunchtime and the course was empty and there's somebody up in the start hut. And I was like, I've been skiing here. I've been watching everybody skiing the center and skiing the gates. Do you mind if I do a few runs down the outside edge? He's like, oh. have at it. So it was awesome. So it was nice. All that powder. Yeah, everything gets <laughs> pushed into it. It's That's great. Right. Yeah. Oh, people yeah. people, people don't appreciate what you can get in, say, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at a resort yep. because of everybody pushing snow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's awesome. And, and I ski here in the little town where I live. So we would have yeah. a snow day. I don't know if you ever grew up with snow days. Yes, so I did. So school, I... school was on, but the buses didn't run. And, you know, there might be 20 kids in the school, right? Oh, <laughs> we had snow days where nothing mattered. Oh. Buses didn't run. Teachers didn't show up. Oh, no. we they, Here in Ontario, uh, only once in my career was the school board closed. And I had started walking to work and the director came on the radio and said the school board was closed i didn't know i got to school and it's like i'm pulling on the door (laughs) and the custodian (laughs) from down the way he goes yo dude school's canceled (laughs) oh my god yeah so when we would have these snow days there's this one road and it has a boulevard and the trees are perfectly spaced so at lunchtime i would go home grab my gear do a few runs and then go back and teach whatever, whoever was there. And uh, the kids would come back the next day and go, you skied at lunchtime yesterday, right? And I was like, yep. <laughs> 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 right in town. You know, I just ski down maybe a couple hundred feet, walk back up, ski down. Yeah. Yep. That sounds, that sounds like what uh, Dale Mickelson does on his lunch breaks, but he's, he's luckier. He has Whistler there. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So on that note, where can people find my boy, Mitch Krebs? Well, um, you can find me right here in the Midwest. Um, <laughs> and you got to go to the Midwest. He wants to have yeah, beer please, with you. Please, he wants please to come. shuck corn with you. Yep. We have dollar beers uh, on tap quite everywhere. Uh, so come on over. Uh, if you fly into Milwaukee Airport, uh, I live about, I will be living about seven minutes from there. Nice. Um, so that's not too bad, but uh, you can find me on Facebook, Mitchell Kreps, um, K-R-E-P-S. It is German for small crab, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, you can also find me on Instagram with Kirkland Mitch, K-I-R-K-L-A-N-D, Mitch. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm there. Uh, if you are on Twitter. Um, I'm there. Young Giamatti. I look like Paul Giamatti. So Y U N G. So that's another thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, awesome. I'm here. I'm hanging out. I uh, we've got a lot of events. So Christmas Eve is our first Midwest Telly Dads event. Uh, we ski Pine Knob, and if you want to come ski Pine Knob Christmas Eve, get away from the family. Nice. Because I know it's 
stressful sometimes for some people. Do the Midwest Telly Dads have any uh, social media presence? Or is it through no. you? It's more of just like a hashtag. Okay. Yeah. Uh, think I Josh told me I should actually probably get a true uh, social media thing going, and I just haven't done it. Right. Um, but, yeah, so hashtag Midwest Telly Dads. Um, that's what we're doing. And then we got – uh lower peninsula pinhead reunion that is going on in sometime in january and then february 11th is the midwest te- uh midwest telefest cool well i hope i hope the border opens for us so that uh some of us canucks can come down and visit our northern u.s cousins yes yes yeah definitely yeah so, that'd be awesome yeah well sweet Anyway, so uh, thanks for uh, coming on to the Skippy Report. Yeah. I enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we get to ski. Hopefully so. Right on. All right, man. Hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Well, there you have it, crew. The end of episode number 18. With a special thanks to my boy, Mitch Kreps, from the American Midwest. He's based out of Wisconsin, And if you're interested in checking out some famous Midwest skiing and glades, woods, not skiing trees, we ski the woods in the Midwest and the East, hit Mitch up on Instagram at Kirkland Mitch and on Facebook, Mitch Kreps. Anyways, thanks again, Mitch, for doing this. It was great fun. And hopefully as soon as the border gets open, we can meet in person instead of over Zoom. Anyways, crew, check back later for another episode of the Skippy Report.